Welcome to the Travel Squad Podcast, where adventure meets inspiration. We're your hosts. I'm Brittany. I'm Kim. And I'm Jamal. Together, we explore international destinations, hike epic national parks, and share unforgettable travel experiences with you, one passport stamp at a time. Our mission is to inspire you to travel by showing you how you can make it work no matter your budget, schedule, or experience level. We bring you along so that you can laugh, get excited, and start planning your own trip. So grab your ticket and your passport. And don't forget your travel insurance. And get ready to embark on a new adventure with us around the globe. Hey, squaddies. Hey, Hey, squaddies. We're introducing a brand new Friday mini episode series called Just the Tip, where we give you quick travel stories, hacks, and recommendations to set you off into the weekend right. Today, we're sharing our favorite countries in the world. You know, it's really hard to pick just one out of all of the amazing places in the world, but we each managed to pick one, and we're going to share with you why we love it, what you can expect when you visit, and what we would do if we visited it again. And we're going to dive right in. That's why we're calling these mini episode series Just the Tip, going right in for you guys here. Kim, why don't you get us started? Yes, I want to go first because I am so hyped on this country, and that is Greece. If you listened to our episode back on Greece, episode 228, you know how much I loved this country. Why did I love it? It just had a quintessential European vacation vibe laying on the beach chairs looking out at the cliffs seeing everyone else out there it just felt so good the food was absolutely amazing gyros and fresh chicken and rice and those santorini tomatoes oh my god everything was amazing i thought that the prices were very reasonable for the caliber of vacation that this was it was also really fun and lively with nightlife in almost every place that we went And more than that, I'm a beach girl, so I absolutely loved the water here. It's clear, it's warm, it's blue, it's beautiful, and a lot of the things that I did when I went in September were all centered around the ocean and the beach. Some things that you can expect from Greece that I absolutely loved. You start in Athens, right? Everyone flies into the city of Athens. It's a central hub, and you want to see Athens because... That's where the Acropolis is, the ancient Greek ruins, and you're going to love it. It's amazing. But more than that, it's got this lively modern culture where people are still living today. There's a super lively nightlife, so many good rooftop bars, and you know how much I love a good rooftop bar. Mm -hmm. It's got that quintessential European house music vibe. But then you look up and you see the Acropolis on the top of the hill towering over you all lit up it's so beautiful i could have literally dropped a tear out of my eye i remember when we recorded this kim and you said exactly the same thing one you love ancient ruins you're seeing it right here and in the episode you equated it to when we were in south africa and it was my rhino moment on safari and i saw the rhino for the first time first animal on safari and i got just a little teardrop i know exactly what you are talking about (laughs) when you just get so excited and travel It's seriously amazing. It's everything that I love all at once. Athens is great. The other two places that you hear about very often when people talk about Greece are Mykonos and Santorini. I heard a lot of bad things about Mykonos and a lot of people said, don't go to Mykonos. It's overrun with tourists and blah, blah, blah. I didn't think that. I absolutely loved Mykonos. I loved the beaches there. The beach clubs were super fun. The water was beautiful and warm and swimming out there for hours with goggles on and the uh, underwater camera. So cool. Those memories will live with me forever. It's such a great place to just rent a beach bed, drink, eat, swim, tan. And then when you're ready for to ramp it up a little bit, take the bus into Mykonos town, the city center, where yes, there's tons of crowds, but it is so much fun with the nightlife, the people watching. Such a good time if you're in your 20s, 30s, or even 40s. And then lastly, Santorini. I think this was my favorite place in Greece, which is hard to believe because I've just said how much I love the other two places. But Santorini is a little bit bigger of an island than Mykonos, so there's a lot of fun stuff to do. You want to spend quite a few days there if you can. Because the island is big, it takes like an hour to get from one place to another. Ia is at the very north side of it, very pretty, very touristy. I thought during the day there were a lot of older crowds. 
At night, it quiets down quite a bit. There's finer dining there. It's absolutely gorgeous. You see the white buildings with the blue domes. You can go down to a Moody Bay, which is iconic for the sunset and the seafood and the waterfront restaurants. 10 out of 10. You have Fira, which is in the center of the island. Lots of dining, lots of partying, more affordable to stay there, more convenient to get around the island from there. Santorini also has a ton of wineries, which I love, especially wineries on top of a cliff with a beautiful view of the ocean below you. And they give you like a huge bowl of cheese with your wine. And that's really just the tomato on top. And then lastly, I'll say about Santorini. They also have beaches, of course. Kamari Beach, Parisa Beach, these are black sand or black pebble beaches. Super, super fun to just rent that bed or even get one for free. Have drinks, have food brought out to you. Maybe do what I did and do a little champagne bottle service at your beach bed and then hit up the yacht. You got to have a yacht day when you're out here. All around an amazing time, truly one of the best vacations I've ever had. Highly recommend you go. I'm dying to go back to Greece. There's several places I would want to go. Delphi has ruins, a quick day trip from Athens. Crete, I've heard so many good things about the beaches. There's a national park there. They also have different types of ruins there. The Knossos Palace, which is the biggest Bronze Age site, oldest city in Europe. There's so much history in Greece. We were just talking about Rome being like 70 AD. These sites in Greece are 500 BC or even 5000 BC in some of them. So much history here. Naxos, Paros, Milos, a lot of these islands are just as gorgeous as Mykonos and Santorini, but are known to have fewer crowds and just amazing waters to swim in. I cannot wait to go back with you all. Great description of Greece, Kim. Makes me want to go because I was not there on that trip with you. But my favorite country in the world is Uganda. We went in September of 2022. It was amazing. I loved it because it's one of the only three countries where you can actually go and see mountain gorillas in their natural habitat, meaning you are hiking through the jungle to see mountain gorillas. That is the highlight of the Uganda trip. It was also a luxury experience. Both the food and the stays were both very luxury. We stayed in really nice cottages that were high end. Food was 10 out of 10 every day. But combining that with like the rugged beauty of Uganda and all of the animals was fantastic. Uganda is also a one-stop shop for a great safari experience. And it also gave me a new appreciation for birds. I've never thought like I liked birds before really, but birds are amazing creatures and they're so unique. There are so many different species of birds as well. But when you go to Uganda, what you can expect. So you can expect traditional game drives, meaning you're doing land safaris, you're in the jeeps, you see the elephants, giraffe, cape buffalo, leopards, lions. We actually went off-roading to see some leopards and lions. It was one of the highlights of the trip other than the gorillas. You go to a lot of national parks. We went to Murchison Falls National Parks. That waterfall dumps into the Nile River super powerful, beautiful, and there's a ton of wildlife there. We also went into Queen Elizabeth National Park, great spots for where we saw the leopard and the lions. But Uganda also has river safaris, meaning you go on a little cruise boat and you get to see crocs and hippos. And then you can also see some of the larger land animals go to the edge of the river and drink water and just kind of like roam around, which is really cool. It's a different perspective. But as I mentioned, the jungle treks. So we got to see primates. Not only did we get to see chimpanzees in their natural habitat, we got to trek with them through the forest. We got to hike into Bwindi Impenetrable National Forest. And we hiked down to see the mountain gorillas and spent an hour observing the nine gorillas in this troop. We got to see a silverback that was 23 years old. His partner... And some of their offspring, they have, there was even a baby gorilla there too. So cool. Oh. And then I mentioned the luxury stays that were right in the heart of the action. I know this doesn't sound like a luxury stay, but it was a very upscale glamping experience. It was right on the Nile River where hippos would come out at night and roam around our platform where our tents were pitched on. When we were in Kabali National Park, we were in a cottage where we couldn't leave windows or doors open because there was monkeys, but we had this big, beautiful, gorgeous hut that was amazing in African style. 
And then in Queen Elizabeth National Park, we had a cottage that overlooked a lake and we could see an elephant with the binoculars in the water. So, so much wildlife mixed with that luxury. But if I were to go back and I would totally 100% go back to Uganda, I would go to Mount Elgin National Park. It combines the jungle along with these beautiful rock ribbed highlands with the mountains and there are some of the old Africa's oldest volcanoes. There's waterfalls, cave systems, rugged canyons, hot springs, Kim, and even jungle. Ooh. So it combines everything together that I love, like all that nature aspect. I would love to go back and see that explore there. And then I would also want to go to Kadepo Valley. This was on my list already, but our guide said that that's one of the best places to visit in Uganda. It's in the northeastern part of Uganda. It's pretty remote. But ton of scenic beauty, abundant wildlife. There's huge savanna plains, rugged mountain landscapes, river valleys. They have large herds of buffalo, elephant, giraffe, zebras, antelopes. And there's even all of like the big predators too, the lions, leopards, and cheetahs, which we have not seen a cheetah in the wild. Ooh. So I'd love to go back to see there. It's also renowned for its bird life has over 470 species of birds recorded there, including ostriches, which I've never seen an ostrich on a African safari. <laughs> so I think that would be really cool. But if you guys want to check out more of Uganda, we have recorded it in an episode 162. So go back and listen to it because it's literally been my favorite trip that we've ever taken. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. How to get 30, 30, how to get 30, how to get 20, 20, 20, how to get 20, 20, how to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month? So Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. You know, I really love Uganda just as well. It was really hard to pick something that actually topped that. But we had gone to Japan before we went to Uganda and Japan just still resonates with me. And because of that, I'm going to pick it as my favorite country that I've ever visited. Why I loved it. I'm a big foodie and that's half the fun about traveling is trying the new food. And we had amazing food when we were in Japan. On top of that, you get a great mix of modern metropolis in Tokyo, Osaka, also mixed with the classic imperial architecture, temples and shrines. But my favorite thing about Japan and why I loved it absolutely so, so much was the culture and the cleanliness. And what I say about the culture, yes, the history, but I'm talking about the people. They really respect the space they are in. They respect their environment. They respect the people around them. We could learn a thing or two. And I really appreciated that so much. They're so orderly and just amazing on top of that. But when you go to Japan, what can you expect? You can expect amazing public transportation to get around, whether it be locally, regionally, or even across the entire country. They have an amazing bullet train system, regional metros, etc. You can also see those temples and shrines throughout the city. And again, there are a classic buildings scattered in there with that modern flair that Japan is known to have. And then... You could also pretty much expect the that society functions in an orderly fashion, as I had mentioned. What do I even mean by that? There is queuing to get on the trains and the metros. Don't think you're just going to stand huddled up by the platform. You're going to get ridiculed, looked at. Actually, I don't even know if that would happen because the Japanese are so polite. But you're going to look like the a-hole in that moment. Everybody is in an orderly line waiting to get in. Nobody even attempts to go in the train or the metro until everybody who needs to get out has gotten out. When you're walking on the street, there's a side of the street to walk if you're going in one direction or the next. Same thing when you're going in the metro or out of the metro, you're walking on the right side or the left side. It's It makes a very crowded place like Japan. I mean, Tokyo is you know, millions of people in there feel a lot less crowded because everybody does everything so orderly. 
it's really unique for us as Americans, but cash-based society over there. Of course, you can use credit cards, but cash-based, so do expect that. And I, I really kind of like that aspect of things too, uh, keeping it cash-wise. But one of my favorite things, and we all know about this, is the amazing bathroom experience that you are going to have in Japan. It's one of a kind anywhere in the world, the bathroom experience. And there's a learning curve, by the way. You know, you need to go back and listen to our episodes all about Japan talking about it. But these bidets are not separate bidets like most people are used to. They're built into the toilets or the toilet seat. You can choose the pressure of spray that you want. You can aim it if you know right at the puss or the tush. I'm just going to leave it at that, right? It just knows what side you want to clean by the push of a button. Do you want warm water? There's a button for you to play medley music. <laughs> what I would do on my next visit, we've talked about going back to Japan many times. I want to go during the spring to see cherry blossom season. It's famous for that. I want to go see that. I have to go. When we do. I didn't go the first time. I want to go and I want to see Cherry Blossom too. And then we're going to go and you're going to fall in love with Japan, Kim, exactly like I've fallen in love with Japan. We did this when we went there. I want to go back to Disneyland again. I loved it out there. It was amazing. I want to eat more sushi this time. You know, we went in the winter, not that we didn't have sushi, but we were more ramen oriented, but I want to get more sushi, eat bento box style meals more often, try more of their cuisine. And now just roam around more leisurely now that we've really seen it all, done it all, at least in the major cities of Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. Just really relax and enjoy the time. And again, like I said, if you want to hear more all about Japan, go back and listen to our two-part episode 42 and 43 to hear all about it. Thank you, squaddies, for tuning in to Just the Tip. Make sure to subscribe, leave a review, and follow us on social at Travel Squad Podcast. Have fun traveling this weekend. Bye, squaddies. Bye. Bye.